Hey guys, what's up? It's Adam Ronan. I just wanted to uh, take a minute to just kind of bullshit with you and take some time outside of creating music and doing uh, videos and stuff like that and just kind of have an intimate moment with you and me and just kind of talk about some stuff. Sometimes I like, and I think it's important as a musician or anybody that's making creative content to take a moment and connect with the people that they are making that content for. So here I am doing that with you right now. I haven't uploaded in about a month or so because <laughs> um, I had all these plans. And then on Halloween, actually, I was over at my parents' house um, watching horror movies with, with Gordy and stuff. And we were just having a great time. And I got super lightheaded and ended up passing out, falling straight on my face uh, in the kitchen floor, busted open my chin, busted open my teeth, went through my face right here. Uh, blood was everywhere. It was, uh, so I had to go to the hospital and get all these stitches. I couldn't like talk for like a little while. It was like rough. Uh, so I just was like, screw it. Let's, let's take off <laughs> November, just kind of chill. Um, so now we're getting in December. I'm all healed up and I've got a lot of stuff going on. And I thought, let's make another video and just kind of get back on my bullshit. So I kind of wanted to do a video that's like, um, showing you, you know, the trend right now that's going on where it's like how it started versus how it's going. Um, and I kind of thought, well, let's do that Adam Ronan style. So let me take you back to the nineties real quick. <laughs> You ever just had like a moment in your life that was so incredibly profound and life changing where your soul has just, just has like these crazy epiphanies that stick with you for your entire life and change the uh, way you proceed and see things and do things in your it's just your entire path. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> I'm sure it has. Everyone has those moments. Well, me too. Let me tell you about mine. So we're going all the way back to 1997 here, and I'm dating myself, but we're going back to 1997. I was a sophomore in high school. And at this time, all I cared about in life was, of course, you know, obviously girls and video games and stuff like that. But music, listening to it, digesting it was the most important thing in the world to me. Uh, of course, we're dialing it down here to um, Marilyn Manson and Korn. I was obsessed in ways, this was of course pre-Slipknot, which became the third band I was obsessed with back in the day, but this, I was obsessed in ways that I couldn't, that are just ways that only you could be as a teenager, where you don't have any other focus in life other than the one thing that you love so very much. And that was Corn and Marilyn Manson for me. I'm talking, uh, I had, uh, of course, all the albums. I had t-shirts of each band for every day of the month. We're talking like, like, 30 to 40 shirts where it was just corn and Marilyn Manson. I would just like alternate like one week would be all like Manson shirts. One week would be all like corn shirts. And I was just like, oh, I just want to be like Brian Warner and Marilyn Manson. I just want to be like Jonathan Davis from corn. Uh, I had like bootleg albums shipped from like Europe and stuff like these CDs with like live tracks and bonus tracks that at the time you couldn't get anywhere else. Like I was deep into the fandom. I was fucking nuts and crazy about these bands. They shaped who I was as a musician and who I ended up becoming today. Wouldn't be Adam Ronan without uh, old corn and old Marilyn Manson. And I think a lot of people that started out or make heavier music uh, can attribute a lot of those things to those bands if they're, you know, in my old decrepit age range. Um, so once I started getting into those bands is really when I started to just plot. I needed, desired to be in that very same space that they existed in. I wanted to make the mu I wanted to make music like them. I wanted to be on the stage like them. I wanted to have these huge crowds and uh, girls that would pine over me and all these crazy rock star fantasies that people would have. And one night, and I remember it clear as day, I'm talking this has stuck with me my entire life. But one night I had this dream, like an actual physical dream, not like a, oh, I have a dream. I'm talking like I had a physical dream while I was sleeping that was so profound and like soul changing that it stuck with me my whole life. And I can remember it to the T details upon details upon details. And it shaped every decision I made going forward. Maybe not so much today because things, and we'll talk about it later, but uh, at the time and then for like 10 years past that, it shaped every decision going forward. I referred to this dream constantly. 
Uh, so the dream was uh, I'm standing backstage. There you hear uh, at, at some venue. I don't know where. You hear uh, the crowd. It's it's cheering for the band, uh, which I was a part of. Um, and I'm walking out on stage. But behind, uh, right as you like were to walk out on stage, is this girl named Amy. Uh, Amy was a real life girl that I had was just like madly in love with uh, in in tenth grade sophomore year. She sat behind me in social studies. Just oh, I had such a crush on her. Uh, anyway, she was in the stream and she's standing there like cheering me on. And she hands me this microphone and she's like, "Go get him, Tiger!" You know, I go out on the stage and the people that are playing in the bands are like kids that I went to school with. Um, some of them I'm still friends with today, but like there's a kid named like Tony on the drums who I don't know, I wasn't even friends with him, but he was just there because he was in the dream. And we start playing and I, I'm singing to these, uh, what I guess were amazing songs. The crowd is like eating it up. They're screaming at me. But the feeling that I had inside uh, hearing, being on stage in front of all these people, uh, them eating up the sounds, listening to the music, cheering. That feeling was so impactful in the dream. I like woke up the next morning and I was like, holy shit, that's the feeling I'm chasing. That's what I want. Fucking go for it. And I did. I, I, I chased it like a motherfucker. And I've talked about this like in the previous like uh, why I think music is magic video um, about a little bit of history. But uh, I knew two things coming out of that waking up from that dream. One, that I desperately wanted to date Amy. Uh, and two, that I needed that dream feeling that I had uh, on stage in the dream to be real life for me. That was uh, that was it. That was the pursuit. That was the spark that lit the flame, so to speak, as they say. Um, and like I said before, uh, I did some really cool things. I started out uh, as a really small local band back in the 90s. And then in the early 2000s, uh, I was in another small local band that we played small shows with other local bands. It was really fun chasing that record deal dream, trying to do all these things, sending out promo packs, making demos that were cool to us at the time. They were not cool. They were not good. Um, and, you know, uh, still very good friends with uh, one of those people, uh, Bone, uh, Tristan. Um, we still make music together today. Uh, he's the other half of Bleed the Kyber. But um, and then from there, uh, went and did bigger things. We could, we were in bigger bands that got bigger and bigger, and we started to get national opportunities, and it was really cool. And I was getting those th that feeling had been accomplished. I was on stage uh, doing it in front of what were some really big crowds, crowds I um, had only thought about in dreams, um, and the feelings were there. It, I could feel it. It was happening, uh, and um, you know the dream, so to speak, was kind of accomplished. But um, that path is a whole lot different for me now. So this all culminated uh, to up until about late 2010. And after like a tumultuous experience, we went to New York to showcase for Epic Records. Um, and we stayed in Steven Seagal's old mansion. Um, there was a recording studio down beneath there. It was like this huge, uh, that was like the big break for us um, in the band that I was in at the time. And honestly, it was like just a horrible experience. Um, I, and I had, it was leading up to it. And then the trip was bad when we came back. All the post meeting stuff, the just stuff with record deals and record labels was such a disgusting experience for me that it just... Um, I don't know, it wasn't like anything that you imagine when you're young pursuing those things. And then once you get to those opportunities and they're not quite the way you imagined it, you're like, man, maybe this just isn't it for me. So uh, in late 2010, very early 2011, I just, I was like, fuck it. I'm done. I'm done with this. This just isn't it. I was like, I got far with it. Not quite where I want to be. So I quit. I quit everything. And just kind of chilled. I just chilled and thought about my life, worked menial jobs. Then I started putting out solo material in 2012, which uh, under a different name, which now then finally in 2015 evolved into Adam Ronan. And I've been doing that ever since. Now, this morning, as of shooting this video, I got my Spotify uh, on Spotify wrapped for uh, artists. Um, and I reviewed that. And it put a lot of things in perspective for me, uh, things that have been kind of in perspective in the last few months, as I talked about in previous videos. But, um, you know, it was really cool seeing statistics. Um, now, 
It's been a wild year for music for me. It's, it's been a wild year for everybody for a lot of different reasons, but for music for me, it's been a wild year. I've always put out music and just kind of put it out there and didn't do a whole lot with it, but I made the, that conscious effort, um, you know, about six months ago. I was like, I'm gonna put out a lot of music this year and I'm gonna like put some effort into doing things, you know, hence the channel and uh, doing that. And, um, you know, then I got the statistics this morning and uh, the numbers aren't big, but it's, it's not what I imagined back that morning in 1997 when I woke up from that dream. It's not quite what I imagined what I'd be doing with music, but it's so much better. Uh, making art that matters. In those small statistics from Spotify, there exists a few people have been deeply affected from the music that I make. And I've talked about that in previous videos, no need to hammer on about it. But you know, they sent me messages that were so uh, profound and important to me that uh, it was just something I never considered back in 1997 when I woke up from that dream. Never thought that perhaps one day I would be making music that helped and affected people in the same way that those bands like Marilyn Manson and Korn affected me back when I was young and trying to find who I was. The point is here that dreams can come true, albeit they don't always come true in the ways that you initially anticipate that they will be. Uh, you know, I had much different lofty ambitions for music and what music would look like for me, chasing that onstage feeling. Now, I did accomplish getting that feeling on stage, playing in front of hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. The biggest crowd I've ever played for was 30,000 people. It was insane. But, you know, 2020 has been a dark place. And however, in darkness always exists some sort of light. And it was really cool to be able to see that even just for one, maybe two, three people, I could be a brighter spot for people in what exists to be a really dark time. And I realized that that was really those dreams coming true and culmination. And that's where I've ended up today. Um, what about you? What, what has been a light spot for you this year? It doesn't have to be music or anything like that, but what's something awesome about um, that's happened for you this year in the light of all the shitty things that have happened to everyone else this year? Let me know in the comments below. Um, anyway, I just wanted to have a conversation about where things started, how things ended up, and even though the dream is slightly different, it is still impactful and important in a really important way. I have a lot of fun stuff coming up uh, in 2021, and we'll talk about that um, in a couple weeks. Uh, I've got a ton of new music. I'll kind of lay out all those plans for you. Got a couple music videos I'm shooting. Lots of cool stuff. But, um, you know, how are you really, though? How are you? Drop a comment below. I would love to just converse, just engage in conversation with you and um, just chat. See how you're doing, even if it's just a couple of you. Anyway, I'm Adam Ronan. Subscribe for more. Click the bell. Do all those things. And I will see you in the next one.